campaign sign. Everybody in the audience was handed out this exact same flyer. It says, is this a dishonest tax? Is this a dishonest tax? I received an email from one of our big time supporters who said, what's to debate? If it's dishonest, we should be getting rid of it. But instead, this is a question that you will never get an answer to in the next hour and a half from anybody from the other side. It's a question they can't answer because the answer is so self-evident that taxing a $10,000 vehicle at $25,000, as if it's worth $25,000, is dishonest. It's not accurate. It's artificially inflated. It is completely and totally dishonest. For the last two and a half years, they've been hearing from citizens complaining about this dishonest system and talking about how their car tabs had gone from $300 to $500 to $800 when they were told it was only going to go up about 80 bucks if they ended up voting for Sound Transit. But Sound Transit lied to the legislature, they lied to the voters, they lied to the Attorney General, and they lied to the Supreme Court. The valuation system that we have is so fraudulent that the voters voted against it and repealed it in 1999, they repealed it again in 2002, yet like a character in the movie, uh, in the TV show Walking Dead, it's just basically resurrected itself, and it's the same valuation system that the voters have voted twice against and for the last two and a half years, our elected officials haven't done anything about it. They've talked a lot, but they haven't actually done anything about it. And our initiative actually gives the voters a chance to get rid of this dishonest tax, repeal the dishonest valuation schedule, and instead have a system where everyone pays a flat rate $30 to license their vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's a car, pickup truck, motorcycle, motorhome, you pay the same. And the reason why is that stupid little piece of plastic, that little sticker you put on your license plate, still costs less than a nickel for the state to be able to collect, uh, to, to be able to produce. And $30 is more than enough to be able to distribute that sticker to all the people in the state of Washington. You already pay a huge sales tax when you buy that vehicle. You're already paying one of the highest gas taxes in the nation when you use the vehicle. It's simply not fair for them to triple taxes on a dishonest tax when you're already paying more than your fair share with all the other taxes that you're paying. So this is the question that we're gonna be asking over and over again throughout this debate, is this a dishonest tax? And I challenge my other side to answer that question. Thank you. Uh, yes, you Steve, you wanna open? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, typically I don't, take any sides on most initiatives, I pretty much stay quiet and just take my vote. But this initiative is just too devastating and dishonest to the people of this state, and I couldn't be quiet. Now you've seen all the ads, and you've seen the dollar amounts affecting our state. Three to four hundred million dollar hit to the transportation budget, seven hundred million hit uh, yearly to sound transit. We're not even talking about the fees and the bonds and the penalties you have to pay if you, have to, if you get rid of that. So it's more than that. And the $60 million affecting our communities across the state from Wapato to Yakima to Granite Falls. Transportation benefit districts that benefit their communities that they decide on their own. The other thing that really irks me and makes me angry is the fact that this is an attack on the major tenet of our democracy, and that's an election. Now, Tim, I, I love your shirt because it says, let the, people, let the voters decide. Well, 700,000 people decided in 2016 to invest in transportation infrastructure. That happened in three counts. You can't be any clearer than that. It was decided by the voters. And let's not talk, and let's not even forget about the, the communities around the state that made their decision. Small towns like Granite Falls that had, you know, community events and public hearings on this thing. They didn't just, just didn't impose it by will. There was a process to it. But lastly, what really makes me upset is the human effect of this. I mean, look, we've got to make a lot of cuts if this happens. Projects will be delayed, maybe shelved. We'll have to cut transit, special, uh, special needs transit, ferry runs, not to mention preservation and maintenance. Our bridges and roads, they don't heal themselves. They actually need funding. But the human effect is great. I think about the veterans, the elderly, your grandmother, parents, low income, people with disabilities, my son. My son with special needs. 
How is he going to get to work? How is he going to get to his medical appointment? Or ball game or Sunday service? These are real. These are real people. This initiative doesn't, take, doesn't, doesn't just take dollars away from transportation. It takes dignity away from a human being. A person that just wants to be a contributing member of society, but they can't because they can't get to work. They can't get their appointments. And they can't just socialize with other people because they're stuck at home. I urge a no vote on this initiative.